Now, it seems icky, and it's like, oh, I'm going to lose my nexus, like, clearly I'm dead. But you aren't, actually. You're just... If you can get across the map in, in the void race situation, if you can get across the map and kill his workers, then you're in an even scenario. Neither of you are mining. It's just army versus army at that point. So, it's icky, but it's like... It's not game over by any means. Okay, so proxy two gates. Um, I think... Pros can hold this without scouting it, I think. I'm not sure how to do that. I'm sure it has something to do with a stalker and a mothership core and your workers going across the map and killing his buildings and maybe setting up a proxy pylon or something. And then you just kiting him all day with your stalker while his mothership, while your mothership core kills him. Something like that. Because he's going to have an ass ton of zealots. But I don't know how to do it. It probably takes crazy micro. I think I've done it once, but that was like the most retarded game in the world. It was probably against some shitty player. So we're going to talk about like if you do scout it, because um, you need to. And I'm teaching you to scout for proxies. You know what I'm saying? Like you should do it every game in mm -hmm. PvP. No lie, every game. Okay, well, okay. Four player spawn maps. You don't have to. Like Alterzim, Alter. Wait, what was it called? Terrazim, Alter. Stronghold. Alterzim Stronghold. Okay, I almost got it right the first time. Um, four player map. If they proxy you, they are retarded. Because, and it's, sorry for my politically incorrectness, because <clears throat> they have to scout your position. So it's like a 1 in 4 chance. Well, a 50% chance they're going to scout you first. And then a, a 1 third chance they're going to scout you second. Like, it's just very coin flippy because they need to know where you are. And scouting you, you're, you know, when they see you, you're probably going to see them, and you're going to see how early it is. It's just rough, you know. You need to already know where you're putting the proxies as the game starts <coughs> when you're proxying. Um, so that's, it's never going to happen, basically. So only on two-player maps do you need to scout for proxies. But every single game, PvP, you need to. So when you scout the two-gate, you need to two-gate to match him. Um, some people have thrown around defending with um, a forge, and it is possible, but you have to already have your buildings like set up to wall it in, because you have to have the cannon fully walled in, but the problem is you have to protect your gateways and your pylons, and you also have to protect your mineral line, so you probably need two cannons, and that's like a stretch, getting up a forge after you scout it, and then getting up two cannons... And then marking with workers until those cannons are done. It's it's a stretch, like to get that. <clears throat> so for the most part, I say match him and make two gateways and just do two gates versus two gates. Just you just gotta focus on never getting supply blocked, putting your chrono boost to zealots. Um, the thing is, how I play it out is I actually even if I scout it and I was playing on chrono boosting my workers, I'll still chrono boost my workers just once and um, keep making workers and. Um, Obviously, until I can make zealots, because I'm never going to choose to make a worker over a zealot, you know? Like, if I skip a zealot for, like, 30 seconds, he might have three zealots against zero, and that's, like, practically game over. Um, but I do still make workers. A lot of people freak out, like, oh, shit, cancel all workers, ah! Um, but it's good to have a worker lead. Um, for, the, for the most part, they have 12 workers. Um, maybe 13. I think 12. This could be slightly inaccurate, but not very inaccurate, because I have seen this a lot in Heart of the Swarm recently, like, all through Heart of the Swarm and recently, and I've looked at their pro count and whatever. And for the most part, I have, like, 17 or 18 workers. So, I have six workers that I can lose before we're even. So, basically, your second gate is going to be much further behind than their second gate. And your first gate is going to be like 10 or 20 seconds behind your first gate. This is like 100% of the time. <clears throat> as long as you've scouted it, you know? Like, like as long as it's in your natural or like somewhere very close and you've scouted it. Um, so what that means is you're going to have to use your workers in the first few zealot fights. Even after that, you might have to pull a few workers just because unless you like totally out micro the shit out of them in the first couple fights, they're going to be up one zealot most of the time. But if you micro decently... With your four or five stalkers, or have, or four, wow, <laughs> four or five stalkers, I wish. Bam, two minute four or five stalkers. No. With your four or five workers and your one or two zealots against their two or three or possibly four zealots, if you micro well, you'll get into a situation where they always have one more zealot than you, so you have to run away for a few seconds. 
Because you want to, like, chase them to the ramp or whatever. Whenever they're running, just chase them. But just keep an eye on them, because if they turn around and fight and have more than you, you don't want to take any damage. You know, you got to back up. Like, it's very micro-intensive, you know. Um, even though it's such basic units, such early in the game, it's very micro-intensive. Um, you chase them, you keep an eye on them, you always keep an eye on their count. But they're going to get one more than you, you're going to run back, and then your one is going to pop out and you're going to take the fight. Um, that's always how it's going to happen, and you just, just, and then it just becomes general micro from there, just six zealots lined up with six zealots, or four, or three, or whatever, and just, when yours goes down past shield, like, down to green and orange health, then you pull that one back, and then A move it again, you know, so the aggro gets taken off them, they start attacking some with more health, and etc. Eventually, you'll end up with a lot of hurt zealots, and they'll end up with a lot of dead zealots. Um, where it gets tricky is... You're microing like this, and they maybe they got slightly ahead. Like, maybe they killed a few workers of yours. Like, a few too many. More than, like, four or five. Maybe they, you're down to, like, ten workers. Not dead, but they killed, like, six or seven. But now you're... But, like, the, the trade-off for that was you're even in zealots. So now, like, you can do what I said. Like, you can take the fight whenever you have equal zealots. Back up and wait for one to pop out, etc. They may realize that they did a lot of damage to you. Put down a cybernetic core. And put down a gas... And it won't look very different. They'll just have, like, maybe one less zealot, probably. But then eventually they'll get a stalker out. And if they have a stalker out, <clears throat> and still a decent zealot number, and you have no stalkers out, and not equal, well, no stalkers out, but if you have a cybernetic score and gas, you can possibly recover. But if you have no cybernetic score and no gas, and they have a stalker out, it's, you're pretty much dead. Like, it's rough. So, you just have to do it a lot, practice it a lot, and know when, like, shit, I took too much damage there. Like, well, I don't know. I mean, what can you even really do if you took too much damage? Because if you go for uh, Cybernex Core and Gas, and they didn't, and then they just make three more zealots than you, then you're pretty dead. <laughs> I mean, unless you have, like, majorly godlike micro. But there's a couple other tricks, tips and tricks to this. Um, for example, if, you, if your first gateway, like, where you put your pylon... Like, okay, let's see if I can zoom in on this picture. This is going to be way easier to visually explain. Let's make the Nexus yellow. Can I do a box? Oh shit, paint. Okay, there's your Nexus. And if you put your first pylon somewhere like a little bit farther away, like over here. And I'll make gateways red. What the fuck? Hold on. I can do this. No. Why don't you change color? Okay. I can do this. Okay. So. Tell me when I've already drawn the pylon and it stayed yellow. And then I'm going to draw a red gateway. Nexus. Yep, that's a nexus. And then there's a pylon, and then there's a gateway below it. I accidentally turned the pylon red for a second. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me when it goes back <laughs> yellow, and I, and I make the gateway. Okay, now you're making the yellow. Okay. Um. So if you put your pylon there, and then you put your first gateway below it, and then you put your second gateway, like, somewhere to the left of it, that is a gigantic, like, no-no. That is, like, begging for you to die, because your pylon is so exposed. Um, whenever that scenario happens, when he has one more zealot, and you have to back up and wait, like, 5, 10, 15 seconds, um, and you're not going to micro perfectly, or macro perfectly, you know? You didn't see the build coming, you know, so it might take you by surprise, whereas he had been planning it since, like, second one in the game. So you're not going to micro, micro perfectly. So it might even be 20 or 30 seconds you have to wait for that one zealot. If you have to wait that long just to take a fight, he can be focused on your pylon, and if he kills your pylon, you are so dead. Like, wasting 100 minerals to start another pylon because your pylon's going to die, even if it doesn't slow down your production, is huge because 100 minerals will slow down your production. Also, it probably will slow down your production. It probably will uh, unpower your gateways, and you'll probably die. Like, that's a gigantic no-no. Like, never put your shit like that, because if you are getting proxied, you are dead. Um, you have to, instead, put it <clears throat> in a way where it's, like, not quite as exposed. Like, um, like, I'm just redrawing stuff, just, just to be a big boy. 
like maybe something like this, where they have to like walk further closer to your workers to even <coughs> touch your pylon. Um, that will make you less dead. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, it sounds like a no-brainer, but people don't think about it. You know, they, th they think about, am I getting warp gate tech time? You know, and I gonna, am I going to be able to actually finally beat a mass colossus army? You know, whatever. Think about all these things, and then they get hit with like a three-minute push with proxy gateways. You know, and then they're like, oh, fuck, my pylon's in a retarded position. That's, that's like things you need to consider uh, every game. Um, and then you'll just get into a routine, and then you won't even have to think about it. You'll just automatically be doing it right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's like a major deal if your pylon is super exposed like that. Um, yeah. Um, a, a big thing that they also do, I mean, this is once again pretty obvious, but a big thing that they do when you are running back and waiting for that one zealot so you can take the fight um, is they'll run to your workers and try and kill workers. So you might have to run your workers to the left, like all the way to the left middle patch. You might have to run them around even more than that, or you might have to fight with them and then fight with your zealots. Um, you, it's just all about micro. It's about melee range and quickly pulling back hurt units it's it's, it's kind of hard but that's like just how you have to hold it and then once you do start getting a lead in zealots like say you microed well you took a fight well you've got like three red health ze zealots and two full health zealots and he's only has three zealots total like that's amazing you just you don't go down you don't chase him too far you stay at the top of the ramp <clears throat> and you keep making zealots and with your increased mineral income, like with you having four or five workers on him, if you lost none, you know, one or two or three, if you lost a couple, you will be able to slowly keep the lead and still build things like a cybernetic score and things like a gas geyser. Um, and then you just, you'll just have to do that when you are safe enough, you know. It, it's pretty obvious, but don't go, like, full into it, you know. Don't be, like, building zero zealots to make a cybernetic score and make a simulator, you know. Like, because then he'll have two or three zealots pop out, and then you're back in the situation you were. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have to, like, very carefully and slowly transition. It all seems pretty obvious, but <clears throat> in, a, in a situation when you're freaking out, especially since you have to micro pretty hard, it might not be obvious. So these are just little tips and tricks to maybe help you out, but not, like, 100% definitely give you the win. Well, yeah, I guess we have to talk about that other rolling now. Maybe I'll keep it zoomed in. Okay, any questions? Any, anything else? No, I understand this one. Okay. So, the two-gate cybernetic score one, um, it's pretty similar defense. Um, like, pretty similar in the sense that you're like, oh shit, two proxy gates. You need to stay on the low ground. <clears throat> I failed to mention this before, sorry. Stay on the low ground with your worker. Maybe even follow his worker, because if you get like a first hit off on him, you can just keep chasing him around and keep an eye on him. Um, and see if he's building cybernetic score or not. Because um, if he is, and then you start cybernetic score at the same time in him, it's not a big deal. Even if yours is like 5 or 10 seconds later, it's not a big deal, because he has to walk his units to you. <clears throat> you got the defender's advantage. But it's basically the same thing. Like, shit, I'm being too gated. I need two gates and start producing immediately. Um, he's going to have two quick zealots out um, and then probably make two quick stalkers straight after. Your build's going to be like the standard build. You're probably going to have a second pile on. You're gonna, already going to have a cybernetic score most likely on the way and gas and mining it, which is fine. Um, do everything normal, but build the second gateway immediately and just try and chrono boost out zealots <clears throat> to match his pull a couple of workers, I'm not sure the number, how, how many workers you should be down in this scenario, but get stalkers out. And once you do have stalkers out, it is all about keeping that shit alive. It's like, like if you have three stalkers and he has one stalker and five zealots, it might look scary. <clears throat> it might look like, oh my god, I'm fucked. How did I get so far behind? You are not far behind. You kill his stalker and keep your stalkers alive. And it's totally doable because stalkers are so much faster than zealots and, you know, whatever. It's all about them stalkers, all about getting them out, trying to get them out when he gets them out. But if you don't, then just like poke him with your zealots back up, poke him with your zealots back up by time. Um, but just try and match him and try and out micro him. And it's kind of hard, but, you know, it's pretty straightforward. So <clears throat> there's one thing they're going to try and do. Let me build your shit right here. Do, 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 do. Build that shit. Ooh, burgundy. One of my favorite colors. And green for a second. Next no! Okay. Sorry. Why do you fucking do this, stupid ass? 
That's not even right. That's hanging off the map. Okay, it's fine. 